Welcome back to my channel everyone. Glad that you've joined me. Today I want to talk about wildlife photography, especially bird photography. And when we go out photographing birds, what should we be using? Should we lug around a tripod with a gimbal? Should we be using a monopod? Or should I just be hand holding my camera? It's not as easy as it sounds. For me, most of the time, I'm just hand holding. So I don't have my camera on the gimbal like this. I'm just hand holding this beast. But two kilos plus around 500 grams here, so that's two and a half kilos that I'm lugging around the whole day. I find that for me, this works best. There are times when I will use a gimbal. And also, there are times when I will use a monopod. So when should we use a gimbal? When should we use a monopod? Now today we're at Osprey House, and this is one of the few places where I will bring my gimbal because I can set up here, and especially if the tide's out, there's a lot of birds on the foreshore here. So it's quite easy, I just loosen everything up, and looking through the viewfinder like that, very easy, I just zoom around, and I'm not holding two and a half kilos of weight hand holding in my hand like this. So it's very easy, I just zoom around, and I've got a very steady base. It's not sort of going up and down all the time. I'm more likely to get very nice sharp images. So the gimbal is very good for this sort of thing. But if there's ospreys around and I can see them in the sky, then I'm more likely to hand hold my camera instead of using the gimbal. The main reason is that the ospreys will be coming in low, which is good if I'm on the gimbal, but all of a sudden they'll just rise up over these mangroves here because their nest is quite high. So imagine if I'm shooting like this, and they're up, up here, so I'm concentrating, and all of a sudden, they climb up. I'm, I'm up, up here, and then they just move around, so it's like, oh, where are you? It's very difficult. If I take all this off, and I'm just hand-holding like this, I can just be, yep, they're there, and it's move, 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 move. Can you see how easy it is to track a bird? Much easier than with the gimbal. So, to me, the gimbal is a very good tool and if you go out someplace and you know you're not going to move you also know that there's not going to be birds sort of flying overhead everything is just in that plane in front of you then then by all means grab your tripod grab the gimbal you're going to get very steady shots I can guarantee you that much steadier than if you're hand holding especially if you've got gear like this that quakes quite a bit but for me the gimbal is very limiting now let's talk about monopods I'll close this one down a bit. Now you can see I've actually got a fairly big bald head on here. I actually like a bald head on a monopod. Some people will just put the camera straight on here. I don't like that idea one bit. The reason being is that you're flexing like this a lot. I try to make things as easy as possible for me when I'm taking photos. So I really like having a bald head on there. Now if you haven't noticed, this is not the D500. This is the D90 that I've got. I'm actually recording with the D500 because my Sony ZV-1 is still in for repairs. Here's my monopod setup. You can see I've got a nice little bald head here. The reason I like these bald heads, these are just tripod bald heads that I've got, is for this reason. Now I just loosen up the bald head just that little bit. And look, can you see what it's doing? It's like a little mini gimbal. I just move it around like that. It gives me much more flexibility because if I didn't have a bald head on here, watch, if I want to bring it up, I've got lean down go forward, lean, move around. It's a pain in the neck. But with the bolt head slightly unlocked, look, I just, now if I want to lean, yeah, all the weight is staying stationary. So I just move around, take a photo, beautiful. And it gives me a lot more flexibility than my gimbal. Nearly as much as if I was hand holding. But the same problem applies. If something comes up overhead, then I've really got to sort of move up here, trying to track the bird. So if I've got an osprey coming this way, I've got to sort of move around him and then do this. I'm just all over the place. This is why I prefer if it's birds in flight, especially raptors and all that, because raptors have a funny way of just changing angles very quickly. For example, if I was here with the tide a little bit higher and the ospreys are feeding, they could be circling overhead and all of a sudden they'll just do a dive, trying to keep a track of an osprey diving down if you're using a gimbal or even on a monopod, is going to be very difficult. So hand holding for situations like that is much better. But if I go out birding to a place and I know I'm going to be there for a couple of hours, then I will take my monopod. 
because I know I'm not going to be walking around all the time. I'm going to be stopping at certain spots. Having my monopod with is going to give me the advantage that I can just rest two and a half kilos of gear just like this. It's going to give my arms, it's going to give my shoulder a break. I won't have to be lugging this weight all the time. This is where a monopod really comes in handy. If you're looking for a monopod, you know, don't be too much of a cheapskate. Really, you get what you pay for. Some of the new tripods have got the ability that one leg can unscrew from the tripod and it can become a monopod. So it's a very cheap way of doing it that you've got a tripod and you've got a monopod with the same setup. I bought this monopod a couple of years ago for around $50, $60 and it does me fine because it's not something I use every day. If I was using it every day, then I would have probably looked at something a little bit more expensive. As long as it does the job for me, I'm quite satisfied. But I do recommend that if you're using a monopod, definitely look at getting a bald head. Not the tiny little ones that you see that are good for mobile phones and all that. Get yourself a decent bald head because you'll find that the little cheap bald heads won't last long. A good bald head like this will last you a long time. And they are designed to take this sort of weight. So now this is how I do 90% of my bird photography. Handheld. I've got a black wrapper strap on. And can you notice where the lens foot is? Underneath. I know some people put it on top and they just rest their camera, but I find it so much easier. Now I've got a big hand. I find it so much easier resting my hand on the camera foot because look, see with my two, three fingers here, I can easily move the zoom ring. Now if you've got a very small hand, you might be able to do this. But for me, I find this is the best setup because if I've got this foot rotated the other way here, I'm holding it like this and the strap here is in the way. Look, see? It's a real pain in the neck. I can't shoot like that. So everything's underneath here. It's nice and steady. I've got a very good handhold of the camera and I can just go away and shoot. If I need to zoom in, not hard at all. Just see, very easy for me. This took me a while to actually work out how to do all this. It's not something that you're just gonna pick up overnight. And this is why I do tutorials on wildlife photography, bird photography, landscape photography just to give people an idea of how to do things better, how to make it easier for you when you're out photographing, the sort of gear that you should use. This is why some people say like, you know, would you recommend a gimbal? And I say, well, yes, but understand that a gimbal isn't a one size fits all. You're not gonna be using a gimbal all the time. My gimbal here is quite heavy with my tripod because if I put this gimbal on a very weak tripod, I'm gonna have a lot of flex. I'm gonna need a tripod that will be able to cope with the gimbal and then with my camera. That's a lot of weight to carry around. And imagine if you're walking through bushlands, you've got to carry this all the time. You're going to be stuffed by the end of a couple of hours. Hand holding like this is much better. If you're finding that hand holding gets too heavy for you, grab a monopod because you could put a little sling and you can just sling the monopod over your back. When you need it, it's there because they're very light. So I just want to share my thoughts on should you use a gimbal, when to use a gimbal, should you use a monopod, when should you use a monopod, and when should you just hand hold, because all three have a place in bird photography or wildlife photography. It's just knowing when to use them. It all depends on your circumstances, because if you go to a bird hide and you've got very limited view, now there's a bird hide just down here, and if I'm in the bird hide, I could easily put my camera on the gimbal because my field of view is going to be very limited. Why am I going to bother hand holding two and a half kilos of weight of camera gear instead of putting on a gimbal? It makes sense to use a gimbal. But if I'm out walking about and all that and there could be things moving around, I'll just hand hold. So if this video has been of value to you, give me a big thumbs up. Stay safe, enjoy your bird photography, and I'll see you next time.